Today on the Drive Channel, the Jaguar XK. Is it a future classic? Let's find out. XK was designed to replace the Jaguar XK8, also known as the X150. That was a Ford design, which in my opinion is a modern classic today. But this car was designed by Ian Callum. Uh, Ian Callum was famous for the DB7 and also for the, the Vanquish of the early 2000s. Let's take a moment to appreciate the styling. Let's take a look underneath the trunk lid. So the space in the back of the Jaguar x let's see what it looks like. I guess we got to start with the larger bits. Garment bag on top of that. This often goes in the car, but we'll just see how much room we have in the trunk. And then the duffel. And as you can see, there's actually plenty of room in the trunk. But what this car is all about is the drive. So let's see what it's like on the road. Okay, so first impressions that you get is there's a lot of wood and a lot of leather in the car, as you would expect from any Jaguar. Uh, the seating position is really good. Of course, you can adjust the steering wheel any way you want. The, uh, the seat controls are on the, are on the door, which I kind of like. It kind of reminds me of my dad's old Mercedes. And it even has side bolsters that can be adjusted to kind of give you a hug while you're driving if the, uh, if the road starts to get twisty. But this car is more of a GT car. You can, tw you can use it for the twisties, but it's really made for the highway. But let's, uh, let's see what it's like to drive. Keyless start, as you would expect and we're off. Now, one of the things that this car also has is a sport mode. I tend to drive this car in sport mode because it stiffens up the front shock absorbers and it allows you to hold the car in gear while paddle shifting indefinitely. It will not go back to automatic. Yes, nice sound. We are definitely going to miss that sound when everything goes electric.
grip is very good. But the car, of course, feels heavy. It's 3,900 pounds. So it's definitely not going to feel light. Now this car, unlike its predecessor, has wider tires. This has 245s in the front and 275s in the rear. It actually has a slightly wider tire in the front than my, my Aston Martin has. But in a, in a sense, it needs that because, of course, it's got a very heavy engine that is not mid-mounted. It is in the front, uh, in front of the, uh, the axles, the front axle. So this is not a front mid-engine car at all. Actually, it's sitting over the front axle. It's not behind the front axle. But still, you could take this car, point it towards the apex, expect it to lean a little bit, not too much. And then power out of the corner. And it feels great. And you can actually make a lot of great noises just by holding it in the gear. that sound. Now in terms of the bumps, because it's still a Jaguar, we'll go over some bumpy bits here. It probably sounds a lot worse on the camera, but you, I can assure you that I am not feeling it through the suspension, and it is a very different feeling. I was actually just out in the, the Aston Martin on essentially the exact same roads as these, and you can feel the bumps. It's not a rough handling car by any stretch, that Aston Martin, but this one, it just goes right over the bumps and you barely notice it. And this is a pretty good road here. It's very tight. Just find that apex, brake for the next corner. Kiss the second apex. Not a huge amount of torque to pull the car out, but Again, not a sports car. Okay, one last little hairpin over here. Do second. Yeah, not neck snapping. But 300 horsepower does feel good. In fact, what's nice about this car is that it's the sort of car that you really have to work to get it to move. And I like that. I think one of the things that we've lost with the brand new cars with 600, 700, 800 horsepower, you do not have to work to make a car like that go fast. This one you do. You have the apex. You have to know how to hit the, hit the apex just right, flow out, put your, put your foot all the way to the floor slowly, you'll be going. So the Jaguar XK, in conclusion, is it a modern day classic? Well, it has the looks, it has the badge with a ton of history, it has the performance which is appropriate for the type of car that it is, it's not a sports car, it's not meant to be, but it has good power and great sound. And in a day and age where everything is going to, uh, to turbochargers, and fewer cylinders, the cars have just become just, just embarrassing piles of disappointment in my view. So will this car be a classic? I actually think it is because there are times that I find myself after having owned this car for now uh, almost three years, looking in the classifieds for ones exactly like it, just with fewer miles, so that I could care for and cost it that car forever. Because at the moment, there aren't a lot of cars right now that appeal to me. So if you like this video and you like speed, uh, definitely keep watching because there's a lot more content coming your way. And if you like exclusivity, let's face it, I got like 30, 30 people who are subscribers. So you could be one of only 30 people in the whole world. So subscribe and uh, I'll see you in the next video.